Okay, now let us look at this topic high altitude. So basically guys, what they are saying is you are going to climb a mountain. Okay, and you are reaching a higher altitude. So here you have sea level. At sea level you have some high pressure. Okay, pressure is high here. So your partial pressure of oxygen also is more here. So pressure of oxygen is more. So obviously you are able to breathe easily. On top the amount of oxygen is the same. But the pressure is less. Okay, the barometric pressure is less. So the pressure of O2 is also less. Now what happens in this case. The pressure of O2 if it is less. Um, what's happening? What's happening? Uh, you cannot breathe. So what will happen? The partial pressure of oxygen is less. So what will happen to you? Here, this is the word they have written. Oxygen tension within the alveoli is further reduced. Okay, the oxygen tension within the alveoli is reduced. Okay, so so what exactly is happening here? Where is the altitude? Altitude above sea level. So this is where you're uh, the uh, you're increasing. You've gone to eight thousand. Let's say that is like Everest. They have written here Everest eight thousand. So what will happen here? The partial pressure of the oxygen is less. Yes, that we understood. See, the partial pressure at sea level is here. The partial pressure of um, oxygen at um, Mount Everest has come here. See, at sea level, the partial pressure was here. And at sea level, it has come off till here. Uh, sorry, at Everest, it has come off till here. The partial pressure has decreased, right? Now, what will happen to the arterial oxygen saturation? What happens to your oxygen saturation? If you take a pulse oximeter and check oxygen saturation, that is also decreasing so at oxygen saturation also decreases okay so that's it so you have understood what exactly is happening the partial pressure of inspired oxygen is less so the oxygen arterial oxygen saturation is also less okay so what happens here you will try to adjust that is acclim acclimatization 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 basically you will try to adjust right uh, so you will have you will try to make more erythropoiesis right you'll try to make rbc's then you will try to, your body will try to manage the hemo concentration hyperventilation you will breathe faster right to get the carbon dioxide out and get the oxygen in so all this you will do okay your body will try to do all this but this acclimatization um it takes time okay so you should not uh, expect your body to acclimatize so fast so what you should do you should stay here at some for some days till your body gets adjusted and you're able to manage for a few days then they camp here for another few days then they camp here for another few days then they camp here for another few days then they camp so you should not climb rapidly okay that's what they are saying here so you should uh, uh, plan accordingly this process of acclimatization Take several days, so you should plan accordingly. Okay. Then, what are the illnesses at high altitude? So look at the headings here. Acute mountain sickness. You have <coughs> AMS, acute mountain sickness. Then you have high altitude cerebral edema. Okay. Then you have high altitude pulmonary edema. HA, HA. Whenever something starts with HA, you can remember high altitude pulmonary edema, and then. After acute will come chronic, isn't it? Chronic mountain sickness, or it is also called as Monge's disease. Prolonged exposure to high altitude, right? Then you have high altitude retinal hemorrhage. It occurs in 30% of people, so there will be hemorrhage in the retina. These are asymptomatic and they will go away. So that is very nice, right? And coming to venous thrombosis, so there can be venous thrombosis. So if there is venous thrombosis, what will happen? Especially if there is inactivity, you know, like uh, there can be vein thrombosis, right? Uh, and cold also can lead to thrombosis, dehydration. So what will happen? This can can this uh, lead to any emboli? Because your blood is clotting in your vein. So look at this. Uh, oral contraceptive pills, if you are using at high altitude, you should be very careful. You will be more prone to all this looks like. It's an additional risk factor. This is very interesting. So if you are climbing mountains, you are a high, hiker and all, please be, check about your oral contraceptive pills. And as a doctor, please check if they are doing all these mountaineering. Then you have refractory cough. Cough at high altitude is common and it is benign. So no need to bother. This is just about dry air that you are breathing. Okay. But this may uh, be indistinguishable from early signs of HAPE, that is pulmonary embolism. Uh, sorry, pulmonary edema. So, if the person is coughing, you should understand whether he is coughing because of uh, uh, this dry cough or it is because of pulmonary edema. So, anyways guys, uh, you will, um, uh, acute mountain sickness means what will be there? Headache, fatigue, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, difficulty in sleeping, dizziness, etc. 
right? Uh, let's uh, look at how you will treat it. So you will just give some rest and analgesia, simple analgesia, okay? So as a doctor, if you are staying near mountain areas and people come there, then you should know what you should do, right? So if there is cerebral edema, you will give acetazolamide, right? Because you want to remove that excess uh, fluid there, okay? So you can also, if the person, uh, you want the person to breathe better, you can uh, give a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor so that it will cause metabolic acidosis and then this people can uh, uh, the, and stimulates ventilation, okay? Actually what they are saying is better to descend, you know, to some level and then acclimatize and then come back instead of taking all these drugs, no? Then uh, cerebral edema, we told you if there is cerebral uh, edema, uh, there can be ataxia, altered consciousness and this is life threatening. So cerebral edema, they are very, very scared of. Again, same thing, whatever they told you there, acetazolamide, right? So you have to give oxygen. Basically here they are saying descent is very important. You have to descend, okay? If you can't descend, you can give oxygen. Improving oxygen, okay. Here they didn't write acetazolamide which is actually surprising for me. Because here they told acetazolamide you will give, okay. And you can, in fact you can give acetazolamide as prophylaxis. If somebody is planning to ascend rapidly, you can actually give acetazolamide. Uh, tomorrow somebody says, ma'am I am going, um, uh, climbing the mountain. I said, don't go, they are not listening. At least ask them to take an acetazolamide and go kind of a thing, okay. So that is what I thought they will give acetazolamide here, but they have not written it in the textbook. Okay, now let's go to pulmonary edema. Either, oh sorry, pulm yeah, pulmonary edema also life threatening, right? So we told you there can be cough. We already told you dry cough. So you should be careful. You should be understanding. So you should know what will be there. Tachypnea, respiratory symptoms, exertional dys dyspnea, extreme fatigue, standard things, right? You will write. So for these people also you will tell go descend, take oxygen, take nifedipine. What is this nifedipine calcium channel blocker? What will it do? It will reduce pulmonary arterial pressure. So edema you can stop looks like. Okay. Oxygen therapy we already told you. Pressurized bag and pressurized bag portable oxygen. Sorry, uh, oxygen in portable pressurized bag you should give. Okay. Because pressure is less, that's the whole thing. So they are giving pressurized oxygen therapy in pressurized bag. So what else guys? That's it right about the treatment. So don't uh, allow oral contraceptive pills people to climb uh, rapidly because they can go into venous thrombosis. Now let's take a recap. So guys high altitude means you are climbing mountain etc. As you climb mountain the pressure decreases, atmospheric pressure decreases. So the partial pressure also of oxygen decreases. The uh, proportion of oxygen is uh, as it is, um, the partial pressure uh, reduces, okay. So there will be less oxygen tension in your alveoli. Let me repeat that, there will be less oxygen pressure in your alveoli, the tension of oxygen will be reduced, okay. So here they are sh showing as you climb how the partial pressure of oxygen is decreasing and how the arterial oxygen saturation is decreasing. So you will have less oxygen and less oxygen. So people who live at these high altitudes, they'll have, uh, RBC count will be more, they'll have more erythropoiesis, right? And uh, they will have more RBCs, the hemo concentration will be more, they will have, uh, and uh, when you go there, you will breathe faster, hyperventilation. So that is basically how you will try to uh, acclimatize to that place, that is adjust to that place, okay? This process will take several days, that's why you should climb slowly, okay? Give uh, points where you can uh, rest for a few days and then climb again. Now, what are the illnesses that happen at altitude, the high altitude? You can have acute mountain sickness where you will have all this fatigue, headache, anorexia, etc, etc. So, these people simply just tell them to rest, descend, go down to a lower altitude, give them simple analgesia. Acetazolamide can be used as prophylaxis if they are going to climb rapidly, okay, because you can prevent cerebral edema. Now, if there is cerebral edema, there will be ataxia and uh, altered consciousness and uh, this is life-threatening. What is ataxia? 
coordination of the body movements not there right uh, so for these people again you say descend descend okay always go down then you can give them oxygen therapy especially in a pressurized bag pressurized bag why this is what is standard treatment descend oxygen from pressurized bag because they are not getting oxygen which is having high partial pressure then dexamethasone they have told here standard things you will write acetazolamide etc now pulmonary edema again is life threatening uh, there can be symptoms like uh, dry cough dyspnea tachypnea that is difficulty breathing, fast breathing, etc. Then uh, for these people, what will you do? Again, same thing, descent oxygen administration, nifedipine you can give so that it will reduce the arterial pressure. Give them, how will you give oxygen? Pressurized back, very good. Then chronic mountain sickness is nothing but Monge's disease. If somebody asks you Monge's disease, remember it is altitude sickness, okay, chronic. Then coming to retinal hemorrhage can happen, but these are not at all dangerous looks like. And venous thrombosis can happen, so you should be careful, especially in oral contraceptive con consuming uh, people. You should tell them to be very careful about all this venous thrombosis. Maybe they can change their uh, method of contraception. Refractory cough, like we told you, because of the dry air. This should not be confused with pulmonary edema. Okay, that's it for now, guys. In this video on pulmonary, sorry, high, high altitude. Okay, bye-bye.